Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 1st of April and I'd like to wish you all and hope you all had a very uh, happy Easter and are enjoying the uh, Easter Monday break if you know your country uh, does observe uh, the Easter break and I uh, hope you all had a great trading week also and looking forward to the new one. We've got a short week of course because today the markets are pretty or should be quiet as uh, a lot of the, uh, the major markets are closed for today. So let's get into uh, the week ahead and it, um, it does say on from uh, tradingeconomics.com that it will be a very busy week in the United States with investors focusing on the labor market report featuring non-farm payrolls and the unemployment rate. Other important data include jolts, job openings, ISM manufacturing and services, PMI factory orders and foreign trade data. Globally, market participants will keep a close eye on the March inflation rates for Germany and the euro area. In addition, manufacturing PMI readings from Canada and Switzerland. Trade data from Canada and Australia will offer insights into the global trade dynamics. Moreover, the unemployment rate in Canada and the euro area are set to influence market sentiment and investment decisions. So, again, it's all about the fundamentals and really, <clears throat> you know, what is market moving and uh, the two main components for really prices to, to move over the medium to long term are you know, uh, interest rates, inflation and GDP. In the short term, it's really about kind of like the, the liquidity side of things. But um, let's get into the trades of the week, some trade analysis and some trades that I'm in and uh, starting off on the uh, the CAD yen this week. And I'm in on the CAD yen and the euro yen. And really the reasons why I'm in on these trades and we can go to the, uh, the Discord room um, uh, as well, I posted this that I was interested in this trade, by the way. So this isn't necessarily hindsight bias. This was posted on the 21st or the 3rd um, in the group. And here it is. If you look at the uh, the chart and I was anticipating that there would be a stop punt. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. But um, if it does show uh, that there is likely to be a stop punt, then I will get involved in it. Basically did. And one of the reasons, or the main reason, really, uh, for um, getting in short on the and buying the yen against the Canadian dollar is based off of, again, fundamental analysis. So uh, the main fundamentals being interest rates and the uh, Bank of Japan is looking to uh, hike rates and continue hiking rates. And the Canadian dollar is looking to cut rates. So there is a big divergence there at the moment. Yes, we've had over the past a uh, week or so, you know, a bit of a pullback, but ultimately um, I'm hoping that we should roll over. And, and of course, the data needs to support the narrative. Now, um, I don't necessarily, necessarily talk about stop hunts um, in the in this, uh, you know, in this uh, Sunday video on on uh, YouTube, but I thought I would go over uh, this trade. And so what it was was that we had a nice level, um, a nice clear and accurate obvious high, and then we got uh, really the um, there was the on Monday the Bank of Japan ended up uh, hiking rates, and typically what happens with a with a, a hike is that it's the central bank's intention for uh, the currency to appreciate, but the market. And I spoke about this last week, um, didn't uh, thought it was a dovish hike as there wasn't really any further market guidance if there was going to be any further rate hikes as Governor Ueda was a bit tight-lipped on that. And so the market took that as a bit dovish. And so you saw really a weakness in the yen. And so um, I figured that, you know, that wouldn't continue on for too long. And so um, with the Canadian dollar looking to potentially cut in June and the Bank of Japan still likely to uh, hike, there was an opportunity to look for some short trades. And so that's what I was anticipating, you know, in in this uh, in that analysis that I did around the time. And then we've seen this pretty much play out now. 
as we go into you know this the stop punt um i entered uh at the 11160 area and um also as well i placed a pending order at the 50 percent area um entry as well as the 95 so i'm in on a market order but also as well on top of that um i've now just been entered today as i'm recording into another position which you see right here at 11195 so i'm in two positions now which offers me obviously obviously a best a better risk reward and so um i can kind of you know manage the trade as such so yeah i'm in this trade to the short side and um if the canadian dollar which should the bank of canada should want to cut rates um this uh, at least uh, come june and the yen look to high crates at some point uh, this year again then that should want to push prices to the downside and that's what i'm really anticipating and pretty much the same uh, trade with the uh, with the uh, euro yen right so the euro yen we had a nice um, level here um, and then we had a nice close price went above stopped everybody out came back inside I wanted to be a, a buyer here and um, again we've, we're on our way a bit better a bit more profit we've got on the euro yen and so um, and so yeah that's really um, I, although I trade uh, stop hunts one of the strategies um, I use in the toolbox uh, of of strategies um, along with the fundamentals is obviously as well supply and demand and something called capture pain relief and if you are you know interested in joining the mentorship and you've been waiting for a while i really only open maybe four to five times a year possibly uh, maybe a bit less um, basically i'm opening up the mentoring uh, course and it's going to be on the second of april so uh, tomorrow if you're watching this on the first and so, um, yeah, if you want to join, pretty much uh, I will open up tomorrow and you will get, you know, um, a lot of access to the information that I provide um, to the members as well as access to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, which should keep you on the right side of the market uh, more often than not um, and some other perks as well. So, um, yeah, we're opening up tomorrow. So, uh and it'll be for a limited time as well, maybe a week or two, depending on um, on, um, on on the intake, as I do want to keep the group uh, quite uh, small uh, as it allows me to kind of focus on those traders that actually can get involved rather than having massive, um, you know, uh, uh, classes where people are a bit all over the place. So uh, with that being said, we can move on to the weekly analysis and uh, looking at the dollar index and uh, I use the equally weighted dollar index which again um, if you are unfamiliar with that I'll leave a um, uh, on the top right hand side there should be a little pop-up and you can click on that and uh, that basically explains why I am looking at the um, equally weighted dollar index rather than an index like um, the uh, the usual dollar index, the DXY or the USDX, as I think this is a lot more accurate. <clears throat> Anyways, um, the dollar at the moment, fundamentally, um, I do think it, the dollar is is coming to a bit of a, a of an end as far as the upside potential for the dollar. Um, one of the main reasons, although. Um, the headline is is talking about Powell reiterates that the Fed doesn't need to be in a hurry to cut rates and that the Fed chief says PCE inflation data in line with expectations and says inflation will continue to ease on some uh, on sometimes bumpy path. Um, investors are still um, uh, still betting that the US central bank will make that first cut in June. And the overall message really hasn't changed too much, said Veronica Clark, an economist at Citigroup Inc. It seems like February inflation data came in line with how they are expecting, and that's in line with more prints uh, that they would be okay with. So um, inflation still uh, coming down as expected, although slowly, and there will be, you know, uh, potentially a bumpy path, meaning that you could get, um, you know, maybe some inflation readings that are, um, you know, maybe a bit higher, but 
ultimately the Federal Reserve are still, the market is thinking that the Federal Reserve is still going to be cutting in June. And that is kind of backed up by uh, the CME, the FedWatch tool. If we look at, go to June, look at the probabilities, it does look like there still is a 63% chance of an ease in June. So um, that does look still promising. The odds are in your favor if you're looking for a cut and also as well um the bond market is is um is thinking that there could be some cuts right and inflation to stay higher but they're you know basically based off of federal uh, chairman uh, jerome powell's comments uh there could be cuts coming based on jobs right and so the headline is powell juices bond market bet on inflation with tilt to jobs so <clears throat> although the bond market are thinking that inflation is likely to remain um, high it says here that where is it now sorry uh, I thought I had it here right so it was right in front of me it was right here so it says here that the Fed chief made clear last week that he's now no longer singularly focused on crushing inflation he signaled enough Progress has been made uh, on that front. The annual call rate is down 2.8% from 5.6 two years ago to allow policymakers to accelerate the move toward interest rate cuts if the unemployment rate were to suddenly spike. And so, again, the focus now, um, he's basically saying, is that if unemployment now starts to rise, then that could also now be the trigger. So before it was really kind of, it was really inflation focused, but now he is um, unemployment focused. He's adding uh, labor into the mix. So very interesting. So that's definitely something to watch when you're looking at the charts. And so uh, at the moment, the dollar is on a bit on the uh, on the high side in terms of it's, it's an expensive uh, area. Can it go higher? Of course it can. If you are looking to buy the dollar continue to buy the dollar then you're really looking for um you know demand a, a pullback to at least a decent demand zone before looking at going long or right now we are at um a really nice area of um of supply we do have fomc um sorry uh, non-farm payrolls this week and so if for example that comes out disappointing then we could actually start to roll over as we are at this nice supply zone with the confluence of support and resistance. So um, yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, my bias at the moment is still to go long dollars, but <clears throat> I will change my mind once employment data <clears throat> starts to go, um, you know, uh, starts to look like, or unemployment data goes higher, employment data goes lower, as well as inflation starts to come down. So I do think that the really risk is more to the, tilted to the downside potentially but i want the data to kind of confirm that uh, that bias before i look for any kind of short uh, dollars so looking at the <clears throat> the dollar yen and i guess the analysis from last week we can see that prices really hadn't moved anywhere and we are in a low volatile environment i know a lot of traders will be um, you know, a bit frustrated at the moment with the way that price is moving. We go from high to low volatile environments. It's just the nature of the markets. So there's nothing we can do about it. So if you are in, um, you know, you are swing trading and you're seeing that price has gone sideways for the past, you know, two, uh, two weeks, it is what it is. So um, eventually we will uh, either, prices will either go higher or lower. So, <clears throat> Uh, my guess is that we are at obviously a definitely uh, an inflection point and so a dis nice decision point and um, depending on what happens this week with the dollar, if it's weaker data, then you're likely to see prices go to the downside. If it's stronger data, you might see prices go to the upside. But I, again, I still think towards the rest of the year, um, we should see prices move to the downside overall as the yen, um, I think the Bank of Japan are going to continue to uh, high rates. So if I was looking at taking this pair, um, then I'm looking for more shorts than longs, at least in the short term anyway. Dollar CAD, um, the Canadian dollar had some decent news this week with regards to 
their GDP and um, it came in better than expected. Uh, so there is the potential for some downside. But again, I do think that this level here is really susceptible to being stop hunted as the level has been touched several times. So if you are looking for shorts on the Canadian dollar, I would wait for either a stop hunt if you know how to trade stop hunts. If not, then you're looking for a level um, supply zone above that to get involved in a short. If you are looking for any kind of long trades, then you can likely look for uh, some sort of demand zone. We'll probably say demand from down here. And then look for uh, some long trades into demand but not really a pair that I'm looking at at all. And neither am I looking at the uh, pound dollar. I think the pound at the moment, there was some news out with regards to um, traders betting that the Bank of England is more likely to start rate cuts than the Fed or the ECB. So the odds of a quarter point cut in May are, are doubled to those peers and Citigroup favours betting on a rate cut at the next meeting. So... There is rumours, we're buying the rumour, selling the facts. So the rumour is that the Bank of England could cut in May, although I don't think that is going to happen. Um, traders are definitely positioning themselves uh, for that. But there has been some pushback on that, and that was from um, a Bank of England's man says markets pricing too many UK rate cuts this year. So she is a hawk. And so um, she's basically saying that the markets are wrong. So the UK central bank's most hawkish official has become a bit more dovish. Um, a man says the UK is unlikely to lead a global shift towards lower rates. So um, it does look like it's a close race in terms of who is looking to cut first, whether it's the Fed, whether it's the Bank of England or, or the European central bank. I think it's going to be the European central bank are going to go first. Um, and the Bank of England may actually go last, but it really depends on what happens with inflation. Um, but if inflation starts to come down more than expected, then I think the British pound and the Bank of England may actually start to, and the market may start to price in um, uh, rate cuts sooner, which would then lead to um, the pound dollar looking at going uh, short. So let's see what happens here. If you are looking for long trades, then I think any moves down into this zone, or maybe even lower, may be decent for a, uh, a long trade. But again, that would really be dependent upon um, the, uh, uh, the Federal Reserve really maybe cutting first and the Bank of England cutting later. Pound yen, um, I think the pound yen is a short as well, basically just for the fact that the Bank of Japan are really the uh, the, the the currency that are the only currency that are hiking um, in this environment, and everyone else is looking to uh, hold or uh, cut rates. And so, again, I would expect over the medium to long term prices to move to the downside, whether they do something like that or whether they do something like this. It pull back a little bit and then go to the downside. I do think we've reached a bit of a high um, in terms of the um, the fundamentals. But again, nobody knows if 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 inflation comes you know down and inflation doesn't remain stubborn for the Japanese yen, then um, in fact the yen may hold for longer, which will then make it a lot weaker. But the data has to support you know the narrative of the. Bank of Japan hiking rates, but I do think that that is the path of these resistance. If you're still looking to buy the pound against the yen, then really prices coming down to this demand zone should be what you're looking for, and then look for a buy trade within this zone. And you've got a really nice area of support and resistance as confluence within that uh, demand zone. Looking at the euro dollar, and the euro dollar has come down, it kind of broke through slightly. the uh, that zone there from last week. I mean, my bias would be to short the euro against the uh, against the dollar, and we've really kind of seen that you know play out. And we're actually in this really wide zone of supply. I'm not going to basically draw it all on. I'll just leave it there for now. Um, but I think if we do pull back to this zone or anywhere within this area here. I think that's going to be really nice for a, uh, a short trade uh, to the downside. 
again, I don't really think that the um, uh, the euro, and again, it does depend on the data, but my bias would be to short the, uh, the euro versus the dollar. Now, there is an opportunity to go long on the euro if this week uh, data shows that the... Um, the power, sorry, the, the dollar is, um, you know, is a bit weak on the weak side and in, un, and unemployment um, is looking uh, to go, uh, is, is, is higher. So, um, yeah, there is an opportunity to look for some uh, some long trades. But again, I would probably wait for maybe the data to come out before looking at going long. I want when that as confirmation to go long on the, uh, or short really the dollar, I would say, um, against the euro. Euro yen again covered this already. I do think that prices should be on its way down, but if it does pull back a little bit, that would offer a better price to get short. And if you are looking for long trades, then you're really looking at a move to the upside from this demand zone here or slightly lower around there. Um, Euro pound, um, Euro pound again, we did. Uh, you know, come down, and I expect to put it at this week. But um, with the likes of the pound, you know, there's a buy the rumor or sort of sell the rumor uh, situation happening with the pound in terms of the fact that they could start to um, uh, cut in May. Then this could, you know, make the uh, euro pound move to the upside. But uh, not really a pair I'm interested in anymore. There was actually a really nice stop hunt. Um, above this level here which actually worked out as well I know one of the traders in the group ended up getting involved in this so there was a nice uh, trade there stop hunt and then to the downside now there could be um, a move to the upside but if I'm looking to take this trade it would have to be either up at these highs here top of that supply zone or really down at these lows before looking at long trades so uh, where we are now not interested but i may be a little bit more interested technically if this if these two scenarios start to play out but not for now but uh, those are really your options and the aussie dollar i do think as the us dollar starts to uh, look like it's cutting rates in june i think the beneficiary of that is going to be the australian dollar as they are one of the last um, central banks to cut rates. So I think a pullback, uh, you know, a move uh, like this on like these should be decent for uh, long trades, just based off of the dollar looking to uh, to cut sooner. And so um, there is an opportunity to look for some entries right here or look for trade um, if prices do pull back a bit further and um, I like the Australian dollar at the moment and um, yeah it's one of the trades uh, one of the currencies that I'm uh, bullish on this year also we, there was some actual news out of China let me see if I can find it uh, I did have it um, somewhere here or maybe, maybe I closed it maybe I did close it anyways um, we're talking about I think China PMIs um, came in actually better than expected and any positive news that comes out of China should um, uh, help the Australian dollar to appreciate as uh, the Australian uh, economy or Australia is um, one of China's biggest trade partners. So if China are growing, then that would mean that the Australian economy is also should grow as a beneficiary. Therefore, the Australian cu uh, currency should, uh, should, should strengthen and should appreciate. And so uh, my bias would be more upside than downside at the moment. I do, I'm just going to start to position myself once I start to see the US dollar uh, look to um, uh, cut rates sooner. And then finally, gold and gold making new highs, right? We were looking for this pull, well, we were looking for a pullback, but I was saying last week that there's the possibility of a pullback into that demand zone, which it, you know, it basically uh, went from. Um, but again, being confident on buying gold would be you have a definitely have a short bias on the um, on the uh, on gold, but also as well gold. There is some news: gold jumps to record as favored Fed inflation gauge stokes rally. So bullion 
opened second quarter uh, with climb towards $2,270 an ounce. And JP Morgan Chase says the metal is its number one pick among, among commodities. And so it says here gold rose to a record as indications that the Federal Reserve is getting closer to cutting interest rates added impetus to a rally that is also being driven by geopolitical t- tensions and robust, robust Chinese demand. And so gold... Um, just keeps making higher highs. There was an opportunity to get involved on a pullback there. Um, I think the next area to look for any kind of buy trades is going to have to be, again, another pullback into that 2160s. As I said, that's now looking like a nice bargain price, and that's really what demand zones are. Also to add to that um, is that commodities will rally when the Fed cut rates, says Invesco. So, again, the fundamentals are really telling us, right, um, you know, what is likely to happen. And I posted, even though this article came out on the 26th of March in the group, if you're going to be a part of this group, you'll get this information a lot sooner. So if you scroll down to the uh, commodities channel, right, and then go to the news, I posted uh, basically an article um from uh, was from Goldman Sachs basically says commodities to benefit as central banks cut rates, right? So pretty much Invesco was saying that um, Goldman Sachs have been saying this copper, aluminium and oil products forecast to see best returns and banks view Echo's upbeat um, outlook as Macquarie Kyle Group. So again, um, commodities will advance this year as central banks in the US and Europe move to reduce interest rates, helping to support industrial and consumer demand, according to Goldman Sachs. So you've got Invesco on one hand and you've got Goldman Sachs all talking about the um, rate cuts um, helping commodity prices. And this is you know, what you really need to understand when it comes to fundamental analysis is that, you know, there's no price chart that's going to tell you this, right? I don't care what, you know, you 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 say it was just a 50-50 guess if you get it right. But ultimately, you want the banks and the smart money um, and the smartest minds, you know, uh, as, as confluence with your trade idea, right? And with your technicals. And if they're saying this, of course, they could be wrong, but ultimately, you know, you want a better than 50-50 chance. And if these guys are saying this and it makes all the sense in the world, then why wouldn't you then just look for <clears throat> long commodity prices as it starts to, you know, play out? So, yeah, that's basically what's happening. And, um, yeah, really nice. And that area actually was a decent area of uh, support and resistance as well. So, nice area but again it had to kind of create this demand zone before you know entering in and around this zone so <clears throat> really nice uh, play to the upside there was the potential for a stop hunt uh, um, above the area uh, but the stop hunt just didn't play out so i did say that into the group that there could be the potential for prices to stop hunt around here but again there wasn't an entry which means there was no trade which means that no one would have lost any trades or which means any, any money um, but that would have been a play based off of really um, you know you thinking that the the dollar was really going to rally but again going back to the dollar index you would have had to have been really buying the dollar at highs which you don't really want to do right you want to buy the, the dollar when it's low buy low and sell high so um, in order for you to buy gold it's important for at least the dollar index to be you know, to have pulled back to some degree. And then, you know, if the dollar's cheap and gold is expensive, that's a better setup. Yeah, when you have the dollar is expensive, right, uh, and gold is expensive, it's it's a harder trade or a harder, um, it's harder to kind of predict or forecast um, which one is going to win out in the end, right? So ultimately, you want them to both diverge. You want one to be cheap and one to be expensive. And then, that's a better trade or at least a better setup anyway. But um, but yeah, I think um, it does look like as the uh, central banks are being cutting or will be cutting in June into, you know, the rest of the year, commodity prices should rise. So pretty much any pullbacks into demand zones should be buying opportunities, not financial advice, of course. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the analysis. And uh, again, uh, if you want to join the Trading 180 uh, mentoring group and really take your trading to the next level, um, we are open on the 2nd of April. So, uh, yeah.
that's it. Hope you have a great trading week. Take care and speak to you soon.